Hare Krishna. So we are uh, discussing the first shloka of Shikshashtaka. And I'll just chant the shloka one more time and then we will um, continue where we stopped yesterday. Cheto darpanam arjanam bahamaha dhavagni nirvapanam sheya khairava chandrika vitaranam vidya vadu jivanam anandam buddhivardhanam pratipadam purnamrita swadhanam Sarvatma Snapanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. So the translation goes like this. Let it be all victory for the chanting of the holy name of Lord Krishna, which can cleanse the mirror of the heart and stop the miseries of the blazing fire of material existence. That chanting is the waxing moon that spreads the white lotus of good fortune for all living entities. It is the life and soul of all education. The chanting of the holy name of Krishna expands the blissful ocean of transcendental life. It gives a cooling effect to everyone and enables one to taste full nectar at every step. So yesterday we were discussing uh, the, first, the first three words of the Shikshashtaka, Cheto Darpana Marjanam, and we were discussing from different angles, how Srila Prabhupada refers to consciousness, to the intelligence, to the mind, to the heart, all, all different aspects. And we were discussing um, commentaries of Bhakti Thakur, Bhakti Saraswati Thakur. So we are discussing this Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapanam, Bhava of material existence, Maha Dava Agni the blazing forest fire, nirvapanam, extinguishing. So Srila Prabhupada explains like this, that cheto darpana marjana, the chanting will purify us, clear our heart, and deliver us from bhava maha davagni nirvapanam. So what is that bhava maha davagni Prabhupada explains like this, in this material existence of life, we do not want any problem, but problems are created, just like automatically, there is a fire in the forest without our endeavor. Similarly, material problems are created automatically by our dealings, by our behavior. So if you chant Hare Krishna, Maha, uh, if you chant Hare Krishna mantra, the first result will be that you will understand your real constitution position for which many great mystic sages and saints are meditating, what I am. That I mean to say, procedure of spiritual realization will be the first installment your profit. <laughs> See how Prabhupada, I don't know to whom he was speaking, maybe to some business people. <laughs> so he said, first installment, profit from chanting, that you will realize I'm not this body, I'm spirit soul, for which great sages doing big tapasyas, big austerities, you will get it for granted. First installment, you will realize you're not this body. You will understand that, aham brahmasmi, I'm not matter, I'm spirit soul. Brahma bhuta prasanatma, without any anxiety, so what is the result once you realize you are not this body? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma. Na Shochati Na Kangshati. This materialistic life means full of anxiety, always. And spiritual life means without this anxiety. Just the opposite. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma. And what is the symptoms of being joyful? This is also stated. Na Shochati Na Kangshati. There is no lamentation for loss and there is no hankering for gain. So this is the result. This is uh, the power of the holy name. But rishis, they have to go for thousands of years meditation, ashtanga yoga, pranayam, um, asanas, control mind, control the senses, extreme tapasya, extreme austerity. What do we do? Chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And that is achieved. So you, you just see the boon of the process. Just see the benefit of the process. Huh? So Prabhupada said, the first installment immediately. This is 1969, lecture at Harvard University. You see? Prabhupada speaking Harvard University, uh, Divinity School. And he said, this is your first installment. Good, good deal. You'll get good deal if you chant Hare <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> okay. So then Prabhupada again explains. Liberation means to get out of blazing fire of this material existence. That is liberation. It is simply change of consciousness. What is liberation? It is simply change of consciousness. So it's not geographical only. It's not that from here we go to a spiritual world. Spiritual is right here if we change our consciousness. 
It's spiritual. It's not that you have to travel somewhere physically. Even iha yasya harerdasya karmana manasagira nikila. So what is the point? The point is that even in this lifetime, even in this body, even within material world, one can be fully Krishna conscious. One can be fully in spiritual energy. One can be fully uh, in the spiritual world, seeing his own Swarupa, seeing Krishna's form, seeing Krishna's pastimes, and uh, uh, even within Ihayasya Haridas, even in this lifetime, even in this body, this all can be achieved. So it is simply change of consciousness that I am thinking in so many ways, my consciousness polluted in so many ways. But when you think that you are eternal servant of Krishna, that is your real constitutional position. Then that very understanding makes you liberated immediately. Therefore we can say that Prabhupada is liberated soul. We can say Ramanuja Chari is liberated soul, Madhvacharya is liberated soul. Why we can say? Because their consciousness is fully absorbed in Krishna and Vrindavan. But he has material body, but, but it's not material anymore. Matter is used in Krishna's service. Just like flower, you offer flower to Krishna. Is it material or spiritual? Is it spiritual? Why? Because by smelling it, you're getting uplifted, you're getting purified. Externally, he may show qualities of matter. He may dwindle, he may dry up next two, three days. But the, the benefit of that flower is fully spiritual. So even material body, of the spiritual master is not material body, it's spiritual body. May show symptoms of matter, that it will dwindle, it will get old, it will, it will perish. But when you offer pranam to the samadhi of the spiritual master, you can get prem bhakti. You can get, because that personality is present there, it's a spiritual, it's not material. Everything used by spiritual master, his pen, his shoes, his table, we don't use, we respect, we sit. Why? Because it was completely purified by being used by him into Krishna's devotional service. So this is all spiritual. Even touching his shoes, you, you get Prem Bhakti. So this is the power. So here the, the point is that Bhava Mahadavagni, free from material existence by change of consciousness, by purifying consciousness. And then immediately you are delivered. So Bhava Mahadavagni doesn't mean only that all our suffering will stop. A new person comes <clears throat> to the temple, we tell him to chant Hare Krishna and you'll be happy. So he thinks, how he thinks? He thinks, oh good, chant Hare Krishna, I'll get money, I'll get good wife, I'll get good health, I'll be better in life. Simply bless us. Bless us means, you know, let me have a happy life. Happy life means, let me enjoy life. Completely materialistic consciousness. But what is the blessing by chanting you will be happy, that's for sure. You'll be happy as a pure spirit soul. You'll be happy as a pure servant of God. You'll be eternally happy by being eternal servant of Krishna. That is what they don't understand at the beginning. But by hearing, that knowledge comes. So real liberation means freedom from matter altogether, change of consciousness. Okay, then Srila Prabhupada explains this. As enunciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Shikshashtaka, Cheto Darpanam Arjanam Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapanam. As soon as one's heart is cleansed, the blazing fire of material existence is immediately extinguished. Look at this statement. Our hearts are meant for the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We are meant for that. We are meant to be with Krishna. What are you doing here in Salem? We are foolish conditioned souls. What we are doing here? Huh? We are supposed to be with Krishna, dance with Krishna, play with Krishna, eat with Krishna, sing with Krishna, for Krishna's pleasure in spiritual world. But we are all stuck in material here, where we are, Karpur, very prestigious place, just next to Brahmalok, maybe a little above. You understand our foolishness. We are meant, our hearts are meant for pastimes, Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we are doing all kinds of other things and suffering because of that. That is ignorance. That is foolishness of jiva. So this is what we should do. This means that one should be fully Krishna conscious, thinking of Krishna as he himself advised. Manmana, bhava mad bhakto, madhyaji, maam namaskur. This should be our only business. One whose heart is not clean cannot think of transcendental past and supreme lord, but the one 
can once again place the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his heart, he very easily becomes qualified to renounce material attachments. This is called freedom from Baba Mahadava. No? Complete solution for all problems. One strike, finish, all problems finish. No? Once Jadweta Maharaj gave a lecture and he said, okay, tell me any of your problems and I'll give you a solution. Any problems, anything, law problem, financial problem, health problem. And so people went on, Swamiji, I have problem with land dispute. You chant Hare Krishna, you'll give up all this planet altogether. You have no problem with land issues anymore. <laughs> so he went on like this answering people, hmm, hmm, not sure is this what I expected, <laughs> but it's true. That is the true, that is the true solution. Why? Because no more birth and death. Bhava Mahadavagna means samsara chakra. And this is stopped by the chanting of holy name. Then how? Cheto Darpana Marjana, that consciousness is purified. One consciousness is pure, we see ourselves, we see the Lord, we see the matter, we see the spirit, we see the kala, we see the karma, and then also we see Swarupa, we see the Lord, we see the past tense, we see reality. This is not reality. Reality, yes, but temporary. So not real place for us to enjoy. That's, a, that's an illusion. Okay, so everything comes from a holy name. This is the point here. And the result immediate is Bhava Maha Dhavagna. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada goes on explaining. As one cannot stop a blazing fire by constantly putting ghee upon it, one cannot satisfy oneself by increasing plans for sense enjoyment. The blazing fire is Bhava Mahadav Agni, the forest fire of material existence. This forest fire occurs automatically without endeavor. We want to be happy in material world, but this will never be possible. We shall simply increase the blazing fire of desires. Our desires cannot be satisfied by illusory thoughts and plans. You, you see, this is the problem. This, this little paragraph here is against all world. Old world, everybody, every country, every teacher, every poet, every artist, every singer, every PhD, everyone is telling us how to enjoy in material world. And Prabhupada said, it will never be possible. It is not going to happen. This is only education through Guru Parampara, only truth you can hear through Guru Parampara. Nobody else tells us this. And we, it's our duty to tell everyone. You know? And then, uh, when we speak like this, foreign people usually react. Oh, you are very negative, you are very depressive, you are not enthusiastic about, you should be positive. Why we are not enthusiastic? 4.30 in the morning we jump and dance, very enthusiastic. Because we don't want to take birth again in this material world. Because we cannot, we are convinced, we cannot be happy by material sense gratification. We are convinced. Why we are convinced? We believe Prabhupada. We believe, we saw his consciousness, we saw his devotees, disciples' consciousness. We saw these are devotees, we saw they are happy, they are peaceful, they are satisfied, they are happy. They, they dance, they sing, they are well wishers, they are not bewildered by lower modes. We are seeing the result, we, are, we have good fortune to see Prabhupada's videos, Prabhupada's lectures, Prabhupada's uh, memories. And we can see his disciples who are dedicated, who are sincere. It works. Krishna consciousness works. And you show me one karmi who is happy, except people from mental hospital. They think they are happy, no? Come on. Let's be realistic. No? So you see how Prabhupada speaks. This is, this is reality. This is the truth. And this is what we have to preach. So... Rather, we have to follow instruction of Krishna, Sarva Dharma, Parityaja, Mame, Kam, Sharanam, Raja. Then we shall be happy. Otherwise, in the name of happiness, we shall continue to suffer miserable conditions. No? In the name of, you know, how, so what happened? I tell you. Uh, one family came to me and said that, they, you know, came, oh, nice, this, that. We, were, we just went to the South Pole with cruiser, we cruiser, they went South Pole. So what is your reaction? Wow, South Pole cruiser. And we saw the penguins, and we seen the dolphins, and we seen the whales, and we say, you know? Okay, so that was introduction when five, six people were sitting in the chair, you know? 
So anyway, big conversation, guests left out. So myself, Divya Prabandha, and this couple left. You know, everybody else left. And they were boasting about this journey so much. So they said, okay, now journey is over. Please come to temple. Oh, I cannot come. Why? Both of us get sick. Actually, there was no any heating system in the room. It was very cold. And food, what they cook, we cannot eat. So seven days, constant suffering. And then penguin, they told me, penguin, what penguin? I was penguin. I was like this, shaking in the room. And then <laughs> when people left, they, they told true story. Suffering, 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 you know. They came call. I said, never go that. And then company is bad and took double money and this and that. And, and we had to go by bus also and this and that. They never told us. <laughs> <laughs> but in front of others, oh, we saw the penguins, it's the penguins. Everybody is bluffing. Everyone is lying. Everyone is pretending he's better than he is. And everybody has a problem. Oh, you're looking very happy. Yeah, I'm trying to forget my problem. I try not to think of my problems. Why meditation is so popular in USA now and uh, Europe? Huh? The, the teachers, they say like this, for a few minutes, don't think of your problems. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> Okay, sit and think of no problems. It's, uh, you know, at least a few seconds of illusion, then there is no problem. Bogus, bogus idea. Okay, so now the Prabhupada goes on explaining. The Krishna mantra also uproots samsara. Lord Chaitanya confirms this in Shikshashtra, where he says, Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapanam. The congregation chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra extinguishes the blazing fire of repeated birth and death. And this is exactly how Bhakti Nath Thakur starts his commentary. This is how he says, the purport of the word bhava is the jiva is being subjected to take repeated births in this world and continuous cycle of birth and death called Mahadavagni or blazing fire. A raging conflagration that cannot be extinguished by any means other than congregational chanting or Krishna's holy name. Now this is a very subtle point Bhakti Thakur pushes here. There is no other means. Not only that holy name purifies, but don't even try to take another spiritual solution. It won't work in Kali Yuga. Harinam, 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 Eva Keval. So you say, it won't work. The karma yoga will not work in this age. Jnana yoga may not give you full relief. Uh, all other processes, austerities, charities, dana, whatever, it, it may not give you the relief. No? So, now, the, he says also that Shreya, what is that? <clears throat> yeah. Baba Mahadevagni Nirvapanam, Shreya Kairava Chandrikam. Now, if Shreya, you link to this, Baba Mahadevagni Nirvapanam, Shreya, he explains that uh, even, even Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam stops, even that blazing fire of material burning cessation, suffering. If material suffering stops, doesn't mean that devotee will stop chanting. He said that word Shreya indicates that chanting continues because it's all auspicious, it's all beneficial, it's blissful. That continues even after liberation. So this is how Sanskrit is interpreted here. Then he says, yeah, this is what he says. Here a question may be raised. Upon attaining knowledge of Swadharma, does one cease to perform Sankirtan? No, this never happens. Hari Sankirtan is the eternal occupation living entity and is both the process, sadhana, and the goal, sadhya. So this is the secret. This is the secret that we chant Krishna's name, we practice bhakti, and what do we achieve? Pure bhakti. What do you do in spiritual? Chant Krishna's name? Serve him. Well, like you are doing here, cooking for Krishna, dressing Krishna, bathing Krishna, singing for Krishna, playing with Krishna, associating with Krishna, seeing him, thinking of him, everything is the same. All right. Srila Bhakti and Saraswati Thakur says here, this material existence only appears to be sweet and pleasurable, but in reality is like a fire in depths of a forest, which can sometimes burn the entire forest to ashes. So look at this observation. Appears to be sweet and pleasurable. And that's exactly how it's presented to us. No? Non-devotees who have no faith in Lord Krishna have to continually tolerate the searing burning pain of this forest fire of material existence. Because there is no solution. There is no solution. Somebody dies and they are so attached to him and they cry and cry and cry and cry. And then another karmi comes and consoles them. 
what to do. You have to accept these are the facts of life. Life is like that. <laughs> There's no solution. Life is not like that. We can achieve eternal life. We can stop repeated murder. They do not know about it. Therefore, the, 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 no solution. So they have to adjust their mind. No? Adjust their mind. When we talk about that, nobody likes to hear. Nobody likes, no karmi likes to talk about that. What's wrong with you? Why speak about that all the time? <laughs> but this is a reality. Dead. No? We are seeing it differently. Oh, the what is to see differently? What is life? What is that? What is, what is the purpose, goal of life, you know? Everything is different for devotees. So here, they have no solution. They have to constantly tolerate. On the other hand, when Lord Krishna's name is perfectly chanted, the devotees are protected from these scorching flames, even though they are in the midst of the forest of material world. So again, Bhakti Siddhanta confirms what Bhakti Antakura said. Even in this lifetime, you can get liberated. We don't have to wait for next life to become Krishna conscious. Even in this lifetime, even in this body, in this place, we can become Krishna conscious. We can be free from that suffering or material um, difficulties. Adi Atma Kaklesha, Adi Daiva Kaklesha, Adi Bauti Kaklesha. We, we, we can be spared, we can be safe from those sufferings. Okay, okay, we'll continue. Uh, Shea Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. Shea of good fortune. Kairava, the white lotus. Chandrika, the moonshine. Vitaranam, spreading. Now, Srila Prabhupada explains. Shea Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. His life becomes completely auspicious. Then, he actually life begins. Prabhupada said, life begins with spiritual life. That's why he said diksha means birth. Actually, your life starts with diksha. Otherwise, it's just death. Guaranteed death. So life starts, real life starts, real meaningful life. Real life of the soul starts with service, with devotion, beginning of devotion service to the Lord. So he said like that. Then he is actually blissful life. Shriya Kairava Chantrika Vitarana. Just like moon rises from the new moon. Gradually the moon rises into the full moon. Therefore, Chandrika. Chandrika, this very word is used. Why? You know, the young moon, just one tiny, tiny line you can see. And then when we chant, it grows, it grows, it grows, it grows to the full moon. So that is why Chandrika is used. Shreya Kairava Chandrika. We continue chanting. We continue chanting and we'll be benefited. All auspiciences will come upon us. We'll become free from material designations, we'll see our own Swarupa, we'll see Krishna, and we'll achieve our spiritual identity. That is the message. So, Prabhupada said, it is compared with the moon, just like on the Pratipat, Pratipat, I think this is a little spelling, typing, Pratipat, no? The first day on the moon. After the new moon, you see the moon, just like a line. The next day it becomes a little more, next a little more, just like Pratipat. On the 11th day it is uh, practically full. On the 11th day, we observe Ekadashi. And then after four days, full moon, the whole world is full of light. So, Shea Kareva Chandrika, as soon as this Bhava Maha Davagni Nirvapanam, as soon as we get rid of this misconception of identifying this body, then our real blissful life begins. Gradually develops just like the moon develops. So, that is the comparison. So, we continue chanting, we get result. We just continue, continue chanting. That is recommended here. Okay. Prabhupada goes on explaining explain the moon in, in a little different way. Just like you have seen the waxing moon daily increases, similarly your transcendent and blissful life will increase daily like the moon. And one day it will be like a full moon. And at that time you will enjoy life. You will understand. And what is that stage? Brahma Bhuta Prasanat Manasyoja Ninakangshati Samasarveshu Bhutrashu. Your life will be sublime. So practice it. Practice it. Make an experiment of this mantra. You'll be happy. Our mission is to see everyone. Sarva Sukhino Bhavantu. Be everyone happy. We are not here to exploit somebody. We are not selling this mantra. But we are distributing free. Please take it and be happy. That is our mission. Prabhupada's speech in London, 69. Just see, you know. He's, he knows. He's a pure devotee. He have realized it. He is already free from 
Baba Mahadev Agni. So he wants to benefit people. He's pleading. He's, he's please chant, please try. And these are all foreigners. You know. <laughs> but we want to go to the moon. You know, this mind is so disturbed by Western people. And then Prabhupada went on preaching, 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 and by his purity he influenced. But he, Krishna used him as an instrument, and he could convince so many people to start chanting, practicing this. And the result, they have seen the result, they have achieved the result. Now, in another, another way, Prabhupada explained like this. Our position is that we simply stick to what Krishna says. That's all. Now look at the link, very interesting. We haven't got to manufacture ideas. Don't take the trouble of manufacturing ideas. We simply, as a peon, convey the ideas given by Krishna. That's all. Therefore, it has been successful. And it will be successful because there is no adulteration. Pure milk will be accepted anywhere. And if you mix it with water, you will have to find out a particular type of customer. <laughs> okay. Now, where is the link with, with Shia Kairavan? So this revolutionary movement is eyesore for many. You know eyesore, the trouble in the eye. You know that swelling comes, no? All right? Because this movement becomes successful, then the so-called so many philanthropists, they will have no position. There is an economic theory. Bad money drives away good money. So when the good money is not available in the market, the bad money are there. There is an example in Bhagavata that in the rainy season, when the sky is covered with clouds, at that time the glow worms become very prominent. Glow worms. And you see this nighttime, they come, particularly rainy season. No? But when the sky is clear, there is moonshine. These glow worms have no meaning. So in the world, there are so many glow worms because real knowledge is covered. They do not know. They have forgotten what is Krishna. Therefore, all these rascal glow worms, they are prominent. But this moment is clear in the clouds, bringing out the moon, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam. There is no use of any more glow worms. Chaitanya Chandrodaya, the rising of the moon of Lord Chaitanya. Chaitanya Chandrodaya. Now he is rising gradually, just like moon rises gradually, and one day becomes full moon. Similarly, Chaitanya movement is rising gradually, and one day it will clear the sky and all these glow worms will go away. So the devotee shall oh Prabhupada, There'll be no more any place for all these glow worms. So you be, so you be, decided, determined to push on this movement. Chaitanya Chandrodaya, that's your duty. You're coming out very, of very intelligent nation, very rich nation. Utilize the opportunity. So clear out all these glow worms and bring the Chaitanya Chandrodaya. And the method is so simple. Hare Krishna. That's all. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. So you see how Prabhupada is taking it out back to the movement, directly the shlokas. This movement is Shreya Kairava Chandrika. This movement is beneficial for people. And how many of us in life we felt that? You know, when you became devotee, when you came in association with devotees, we felt relief, no? We felt that, you know, we had a boy. We had a boy sitting on the Gita classes. We had a program in steel plant in Salem. And, you know, maybe seven, eight, ten engineers will come, maybe one or two wives, and one boy will come. And everybody was, you know, okay, Gita class. Let us enjoy Gita class. That was the mood. There was not mood to learn anything, but okay, good, something good, something pious. All right, let's sit on the Gita class. So everyone was into it a little bit in that leisurely spirit. But this boy will sit on class like this. He won't look at speaker, whoever was speaker, and he won't say anything, talk anything. He would just sit, and all class stared at the floor, you know. It was weird. So I tried to speak one time, second time, third time, nothing. Completely zero response, you know. But he would come. Every class he would not miss. He would be sitting there, you know. So after a few months, you know, something I was talking to him, and yes, I approached, I said, Bill, Few, few words were spoken. Something, we, some technical thing was there discussed, something about the other card, some other card, something we were discussing. So I said, you have also other card? No, I don't have. Why you don't have other card? What's the use of other card for a person who wants to commit suicide? <laughs> so that was reply. I said, Oops, okay, sit down. <laughs> One more plate of prasadam, please. <laughs> so you see, 
he actually suffered so much, he wanted to commit suicide. After hearing Gita lecture, he joined the movement, he's initiated now, you know, you know him, I will not mention the name. But just see, you know, yeah? you know, just so much suffering, so much suffering. And then when you come to movement, then after a few months and over a year, he came initiated that, wow, oh, the relief being with devotees, you know, what a Shaya Kairava Chandrika, you know. So all of us, maybe not to that degree, but we all felt relief. And then we have, felt, now suffering is when you have to deal with karmas, when you hear the karmas, when you go to relatives and all day they blubber, kalyana, kalyana, sapadu, sapadu, kalyana, kalyana, sapadu, nothing else, they know how to talk. Well, cricket, politics, men talk cricket, politics, lady talk, kalyana, kalyana, sapadu, sapadu. This boring, you know, how long you can sit and hear this, you know, after three days, let's get out of this place, you know, correct? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here, um, Bhakti Thakur says like this, the spirit soul reaps the greatest benefit when he becomes disgusted with material enjoyment and rededicates his time and energy to Lord Krishna's loving service. The greatest benefit for us is when we are disgusted. No? Kunti Maharani, what she say? When one is materially exhausted, then he becomes, you know, devotee of Krishna. But if you still cultivate, still, anyway, I can be devotee, but I can be good position, I'll be CEO, I'll be big director, big manager, and big money. You know, one man is pushing his son to go very expensive college, very tough college. So I say, why are you a torturing boy? You know, he's intelligent, he can earn money. He's smart, you know, why are you pushing that IIT has to go and earn big money? And they say, no, Prabhu, then he'll give big donation to temple. <laughs> okay, let me see this one, you know. It's bluff. It's just for your, because you think that is required. You think we need more, more money, more degrees, more prestige, more, you know? It's just bluff, it's a bluff. So what is it? that become disgust with material enjoyment. Disgust. Not with still hope. Still hope is there, no? Rededicates his time and energy. Okay. This benediction is compared with the flowering of cluster of pristine white lotuses. For just as the moon suits rays, suiting rays, cause white lotuses to blossom, the rays of the mellow taste of chanting the holy name makes blossom the petals of the lotus of benediction for Jiva. So this comparison, Shea Kaiva Chandrika, seems like there is a white lotus which opens up on the moonlight, you know. Or you can say it like Bhakti Sansar Thakur will explain, that night time everything is there, but when moon comes, the white lotus has become prominent, it become very visible because of their white color reflection. According to saying, Devotion gives birth to devotion. One must follow principles of elementary bhakti. Repeatedly hearing and chanting until the first light of pure devotion begins to dawn in the heart of the sincere and faithful jiva. What is this devotion gives birth to devotion? There are a few aspects of this. Devotion gives birth to devotion that we are now chanting. We are following four regulatory principles. We offer pranam to prao. So do we have pure devotion? No. What we are practicing? Devotional service. So this devotional service in practice, sadhana bhakti, will give birth to bhava bhakti, will give birth to prema bhakti. That means devotion gives birth to devotion. Devotion is causeless. How did you become devotee? By the mercy of some devotee. And you get Prabhupada book or somebody preached to you, somebody brought you in or you heard holy name somewhere. So from devotee's heart, who have devotion, devotion, came to you. Devotion gives birth to devotion. But here particularly he's speaking about one must follow principles of elementary bhakti. Elementary bhakti means sadhana bhakti. That will give birth to the bhava bhakti, prem bhakti. But it's still, even now it's called bhakti. Nothing by bhakti. What are you doing? Serving Krishna. What you will do in the future? Serve Krishna. No? So this is explained here. The comparison of congregational chanting with the moon is quite appropriate. The closed lotus flower touched by the moon's ray awakens to full blush. And similarly, the holy name spreads the rays of bhav, or spontaneous attraction for the Supreme Lord. It is the essence of Hladini, which impregnates Jiva's heart. Now we understand in bhakti, by the mercy of Radharani, by the mercy of transcendental pleasure potency, 
one experiences pleasure in spiritual life. Once you experience spiritual pleasure, we lose taste for material pleasure. Rati, or spiritual love, then lights up his consciousness, bestowing the highest benediction. This is what is meant by waxy moon that spreads the white lotus of the good fortune for all living entities. So now Bhakti Thakur gives that higher vision. Not only Bhava Mahadeva Grinavapa, not that we are free from material, but actually we are drawn into spiritual um, happiness by, by the mercy of Hladini Shakti, by the mercy of Hladini potency. So, here Bhaktisam Saraswati Thakur says like this, Shreya means benediction, Kairava means white lilies, lotuses, and Chandrika are the rays of the moon. Just as by the illuminating rays of the rising moon, the lily's white beauty is highlighted in the night. Similarly, the chanting of Krishna's name brings out the best in man and enlightens the darkened universe, showering it with divine benediction. Human society cannot benefit from material desires for sense enjoyment, speculative knowledge, or fruitive activities. But chanting Krishna's name blesses us with the greatest prosperity. Now, so this is really concise. Bhaktisattva Saraswati Thakur just a few lines, bang, straight, straight to the point. No? So this is how it is explained. Then, Vidya Vadu Jivanam. Now this is very interesting, when you see word-to-word -word translation, Vidya, of all education, Vadu. Vadu means wife. Where is the wife in the shloka? Jivanam, the life. Now it's when we chant every day, no? Where is the word wife coming in the picture here, no? Okay, we'll see how it goes. So, Vidya Vadu Jivanam, Srila Prabhupada explains like this. As Lord Chaitanya says in the same verse, Vidya Vadu Jivanam, chanting Hare Krishna is the life and soul of transcendental knowledge. Now, chanting is linked to Vidya, and that also to the spiritual knowledge. We know there is Vidya and Avidya. What we call today Vidya, what is called Vidya Mandiram school, it's Paka Avidya Mandiram school, because this is according to Vedas, ignorance. Material knowledge means ignorance. Why? Because binds you to the material world, binds you to a repeated birth and death. So it's avidya, you know? So, as so far, knowledge is concerned. You'll get it automatically. You'll get all knowledge. Our material condition life is simply due to ignorance. And when you come to Krishna consciousness, the full moonlight of Krishna consciousness, all knowledge will be at your feet. Everything you will know. Vidya vadu jivanam. No? So that, now this is, this is uh, interesting that that um, the knowledge, we, by hearing, we get knowledge of Krishna. Okay, but this knowledge is not different from bhakti. Because this knowledge about Krishna, knowledge about Krishna's name, knowledge about Krishna's form, his pastimes, his leelas, his qualities, his abode, his associates, this knowledge invokes bhakti. Therefore, this knowledge is not different from the bhakti. This is not some dry speculative knowledge of sense control, austerity, separate from Krishna, aloof from Krishna. No, because it's linked with Krishna, there is no difference. We say we practice bhakti, but doesn't mean we don't have any knowledge. But we are not going for knowledge per se, like a scholars, like a speculators, like the pandits, you know. That's just knowledge for the sake of learning. I know this book, and I know that grammar I study, and I study this grammar, and I can do this, and I can tell this. And whatever we know, we do it for Krishna. Whatever we know is about Krishna. So there is a big difference in linking. So many times devotees are accused that, oh, bhakti means no knowledge. <laughs> this is all, all good times when people used to study Shastras. You know? So Mahavadis, impersonalists, remember they accused Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are sentimentalists. You're just singing and dancing. No? You should study Vedanta. All right. So then there was discussion. Here you go. Just behind the altar you can see. There's big discussion. And what happened? The holy name reveals the true knowledge. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defeated all Mayavadas. And they agreed. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was a little dry what we were doing, but what to do? We did our duty. But now we know. What is the goal of knowledge? Veda is just Sarva Vedya. Krishna is the goal of knowledge. Krishna is the goal of education. Krishna is the goal of, of all intelligence 
all intelligence very purpose is to understand Krishna. So that is what is described here. Okay, Montreal. Okay, let's see how it goes. Chant Hare Krishna and hear. Everything will come. Chant Hare Krishna and hear. Okay, now hear implicates. Hear the sound of Krishna's name when we chant, and also hear the Bhagavatam class. <laughs> that's, that's what it means. Krishna's, by chanting purely, without any offense, this Hare Krishna mantra, then you will understand Krishna's form, qualities, persons, Krishna's entourage, everything, Vidyavadu Jivanam. That means Vidyavadu Jivanam. So not only that we will get freedom from material existence, but actually we will understand, we'll get the transcendental knowledge. Now Bhakti Thakur, he explains like this. When the first rays of pure devotion finally appear on the horizon of the sadhaka's heart by his sincerely following the process of bearing and chanting, look at how he speaks, <laughs> bearing and chanting, then gradually Bhakti Devi, or the goddess of pure devotional process, the eridictor of all unwanted material desires, detrimental to the Lord's service, ellips, eclipses the avidya potency. So when we are sincere, we follow sadhana bhakti, we follow, we follow, we follow our regulated principles, we chant, we serve, we endeavor to control our mind, we endeavor to control our senses, Bhakti Devi blesses us. So what she does? Bhakti Devi, the, what is it, he said, goddess of pure devotional process, okay. Now he explains, what she does? Eclipses the avidya potency, with vidya, okay, vidya vadu jivanam. By suffusing the soul with spiritual knowledge, she destroys both the gross and subtle coverings of the soul. By Bhakti Devi's blessing, you reveal your Swarupa. Your gross body, subtle body is destroyed. Mukti, Hitva, Anyata Rupam, Swarupena Vyavastiti. Hitva, giving up, Anyata Rupam. Anyata Rupam means Sukshma, Stula Sharira, gross and subtle body, give up. Swarupena Vyavasati, you are situated in your Swarupa, you are seeing your Swarupa, your spiritual form is revealed. Simultaneously, the Jiva's original spiritual form becomes manifest to the extent that he receives the form of Gopi, for example, in his spiritual proclivity, is steep into the conjugal, if his spiritual proclivity is steep in the conjugal mood. Thus, it stands proven that Krishna's name is the life and soul of all transcendental knowledge, Vidya Vadu Jivanam, Swarupa Shakti, has therefore often been described as Krishna's wife. Vidya Vadu Jivanam. Therefore, wife. Krishna's wife, transcendental potency, Bhakti Devi, Swarupa Shakti, Radharani's name. The Sanskrit word Vadu means wife. No? So th this is the link. Why? What? But Krishna's wife <laughs> blessing. We, we, get, we get the spiritual knowledge. Swarupa is revealed. Without blessing of Kladini Shakti, without blessing of Bhakti Day, without blessing of Swarupa Shakti, spiritual potency of the Lord, one cannot progress in the spiritual life. So you see how it's mentioned in one word, but we don't discuss it. We chant in the morning, but attention is not there. But in first shloka, everything is explained. First shloka explains, we are conditioned, our consciousness is polluted, Chaitodar Panamajram, chant. Param Vijayate, Sri Krishna Sankirtana, you chant Krishna's name. What will happen? Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapana will be free from samsara chakra. What will happen? Shaya Kairava Chandrik, all auspiciousness will happen to you. How is that manifested? Vidya Vadu Jivanam, you'll get knowledge by which ignorance will concord, by which Swarupa will be revealed, by which you will realize God. So, what is first Loka describing? Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. Come on. Sambanda, basically Sambanda. Describing the process, describing the truth. You are conditioned soul, God is supreme, the means is the, the holy name. Basically, you may say everything is there, but actually it predominantly describes the Sambanda Jnana. It defines who we are, what is God, what is our position, what is the process. And then how to act, that is different. That will be explained. Okay. So Vadu, the true knowledge, knowledge of Sambandha, Abhideya, and Pariyojana, that will be revealed. Flow the holy name, follow, okay, now what Bhakti Vinotakura says, Vadu, the true knowledge, 
knowledge of Sambandha Bidaya Prayojana, follow the holy name like faithful wife follows her husband. So this is, we know from Bhagavatam, no? what is a Vasudeva Bhagavati, Bhakta Yoga Prayojana, Janayati Shuvayra Gyam, Jnana Chayada Hai to come. That when you follow Vasudeva Bhagavati, when you practice Bhakti to Vasudeva, Bhakti Yoga Prayojana, Janayateshu, it is generated, it is born. From bhakti is born what? Jnana and vairagya. Automatically, a high to come. Janayateshu, vairagya, jnanam chaya, the high to come. Jnana, vairagya and jnana, they follow bhakti. So he said, just like a wife follows her husband, the true knowledge of Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana follows bhakti. So therefore, Vidya Vadu is used. There's another explanation why wife is used. Just like a Faithful wife follow husband, the knowledge will follow bhakti. Okay. So bhakti, bhakti is essential uh, function of Swarupa Shakti. Swarupa Shakti, how many potencies God has? Hmm? Unlimited. Okay. That is one answer. Then, how many potencies Lord has? Bahiranga, Antaranga, and? Tatastha Shakti, okay. And then, how many potencies Lord has? One potency, Swarupa Shakti. Because from Swarupa Shakti, everything emanates. No? So the, what is the essence of Swarupa Shakti? No? Um, the essence of Swarupa Shakti is Bhakti. The essence of Swarupa Shakti, personified form of Swarupa Shakti is Shrimati Radharani. So what is her essence? Hladini Shakti. Hladini. What is that? Transcendent pleasure potency. What is the idea? Serving Krishna, giving pleasure to Krishna. So what is that concept of giving pleasure to Krishna? That is bhakti. That is bhakti. The giving pleasure to Krishna, acting for pleasure of Krishna, trying to please Krishna, dovetailing everything for Krishna, our mind, intelligence, ego, feelings, acts, body, mind, soul, everything, that is bhakti. So this is the essential. So the bhakti is present in the hearts of all devotees, pure devotees. Particularly the highest devotees are gopis and rajvasis of Vrindavan. The highest of all of them is Srimati Radharani. So that, that, that Swarupa Shakti, consequently personification of bhakti. So this is why, uh, why is Swarupa Shakti here? Vidya Vadu Jivana. Why is Swarupa Shakti is compared to the wife? Because this is the eternal concept of Krishna, Srimati Radharani. This is another explanation. So this is why devotees in Vrindavan freely call Radharani's name continuously. No? They know that by chanting Radharani's name, Krishna will be pleased. By chanting Radharani's name, I'll get bhakti. We also chant, correct? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Eight times Radharani's name. Four times Krishna's name. Four times Rama's name. Correct? We are also same. First Hare. First Radharani, then Krishna. This is how it goes. This is Krishna's system. This is Krishna's system. So once somebody asked, Prabhuji, is it better to pray to, for Guru's mercy or Radharani's mercy? But this is same mercy. The, the, Radharani's mercy goes to Gopis. Gopis' mercy goes to the Manjaris. Manjaris are our Acharyas. Don't think these are some old Indian wise rishis. <laughs> Bhakti, we know Thakur, Gorki Shodas, Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti and Saraswati Thakur, these are all confidential devotees, all Manjaris and Gopis in Krishna Leela. Their mercy comes to the Guru Parampara, to us. It's the same Radharani's mercy. It's the same Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy is that we have Radharani. That is from his own body expanded transcendental potency. So this is, this is uh, no difference. But Guru is accessible. Guru is here among us. How am I going to get Radharani's mercy? <laughs> no? Get Guru's mercy. That's, that's the Krishna system. Krishna system. Evam parampara praptam. This is the Krishna's system. That you go through the Guru. Get Guru's mercy. That means you got Radharani's mercy. That means you've got Krishna's mercy. So therefore, Vadu is used. Okay. Um, now, you see, 
that, that we, we already mentioned, Vasudev Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita, Janayati Shivairagyam Gyanam Chaya, the high to come, that from Bhakti, Vairagya and Jnana is born. We have in South India Tattvavadis, okay? I don't mention name of community, but you understand from Chaitanya Charitamrita who are Tattvavadis. Now, these are devotees of Krishna, yes, but why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called them Tattvavadis? They're more into Tattva than into Bhakti. Tattva means the truth. What's the problem with that? They are not Mayavadis. They are not wrongly speaking philosophy. They know philosophy. They know who is supreme. But they stress jnana over the bhakti. So, so one devotee went to their temple, and when puja started, only Brahmins were allowed inside that inner sector. You know. So this foreign devotee was looking, looking a little sad. So he was talking to one Brahman, and Brahman said, sorry, I have to go now, you cannot come. And he said, no problem, by Krishna's mercy, next life, I'll be born in one Brahmin family, and then I will also be able to do puja here, to the Krishna's murti, deity there. And this Brahman said, ah, this is perfection of knowledge. <laughs> but it's not. That was devotee's humility. No, that was his humility, you know. So they think by bhakti, you'll get knowledge. No? But it's opposite. Even when some of Tattvavadis dies, how they glorify him. What a jnani he was. What a knowledge. What a flow when he was speaking. Nobody says what a devotee he was. You know? He was a great devotee. He left us. We are said he was dedicated to Krishna serving. Nothing like that. They only glorify how much he knew, what book he wrote, and, you know, uh, how many lectures he given, and how he explained this, and how he knew grammar, and how he could you know, comment on this one and that one, and, you know. And I was sitting there, thinking, my goodness, that is Tattvavadi, <laughs> you know. So we are not like this. But doesn't mean that we don't know anything, no? We should study Prabhupada's books, this much we should know. We cannot study Vedas, we cannot study Vedanta, we are fools. It's a difficult one. But we can know Prabhupada's books by his mercy. We can endeavor and read again and again and discuss again and again and try at least this much to please him, and then the knowledge will be revealed by the Bhakti Devi. Knowledge will be revealed. Um, everything will be revealed. So Bhakti Yon Thakur goes on quoting. Uh, in his Bhakti Yon Thakur commented on uh, Shikshashtaka in different places, in different books. He gave a different explanation. There is book Bhajana Rahasya, the secrets of Bhajana, where he exp uh, quotes to support this point, Vidya Vadujivanam. He quotes from many, many different shlokas. He quotes Garuda Purana here. Look at this. Yat ichasi param jnanam, jnanat yat parabam padam, tadadarena rajendra kuru govinda kirtanam. O best of king, if you want to achieve the highest knowledge by which you may attain the supreme abode, paramam padam, then perform govinda kirtanam with firm faith. You see that? Very good shloka, no? Yat ichasi param jnanam. If you want the best knowledge. Jnana yat paramam padam. That knowledge will take you to the param padam, paramam padam, supreme abode. Tara dharena rajendra, kuru, go in the kirtanam. Better you do kirtan, better you chant holy name. So this is that bhakti, the holy name will give you knowledge. Transcend knowledge will be revealed by chanting. Then he quotes another shloka, Bhagavatam. The demigods give the following statement. O Father, O Lord, personality of Godhead, the living entities in material world can never have any happiness because they are overwhelmed by the three kinds of miseries. Therefore, they take shelter of the shade of your lotus feet, which are full of knowledge, and we also thus take shelter of them. Now you can see here, uh, <coughs> Bhagavatam Tawangri Chayam Sa Vidyam Ata Ashayema, that your lotus feet are a board of knowledge. So again, knowledge is not practiced separately. It's practiced as a devotion. And by devotion, Lord reveals himself. He reveals knowledge. He reveals conclusion. He reveals understanding. That what scientists call aha moment. No? He clicks, ah, okay. Yeah, good point. <laughs> aha moment. Okay. No? So Vishnu Chakravati Thakur gives a little commentary on this shloka. He says, someone may ask, since our material entanglement is based on ignorance, it is terminated by the attainment of knowledge. 
Correct. Material world, we are suffering because of ignorance. We are not understanding, I'm not this body, I'm spirit soul, and we are, therefore we suffer. Now, by knowledge of Brahman, you can be free from material existence. So what, why to practice bhakti? What need then does a person who has realized spiritual nature have of devotion to God? Why to practice devotion? I can realize Aham Brahmasmi and Baba Mahada Vagni is gone also. True? So he explained. In answer, the demigods say that knowledge is only found in the shade of Krishna lotus feet and nowhere else. Without devotion, knowledge does not find its perfection. You will go to Brahman, but soul will not be satisfied in Brahman because there is no devotional service. You did not take shelter of the lotus feet. Avishuddha Buddhi. And then Ado. Again, one will fall down when we have to take birth in material world, even from Brahman. So those who claim to have spiritual knowledge but have no devotion are in fact false jnanis. These are not real jnanis. They, their knowledge, avishuddha buddhi, imperfect. Their intelligence is not clear because they do not know that actually perfection of knowledge is to attain lotus root of the Vishnu. Moksham Vishnu Angri Labam. Moksha doesn't mean merging in Brahman. Moksha Vishnu Angri Labam. Attain lotus feet of the Vishnu. That's the, the definition of Moksha. All right. So, these are some shlokas quoted. Um, then in another way, Bhakti Nath Thakur explains why, 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 why um, Vidya is uh, used as a wife, why, why this Vidya, Vadu is used, Shloka. Srimad Bhagavatam, look at this for Guru Kuli teachers. Savidya tan materiaya. Our education should be such that we can become elevated to Krishna consciousness. That is education. That's the definition of education. You can carve it in the entrance of the Guru Kul, you know. Savidya tan materiaya. That education means that I become devotee of Krishna. That's the education. Then you are educated. You're not devotee. Uneducated, PhD, savage, barbarian, that's all. No culture. Why? You're a meat eater, you're a womanizer, you're a drunkard, you're, you're nonsense, you're animal. You're educated animal. All right, you're animal with degree. <laughs> it's still your animal, no? no? So here, Bhakti Tagore explains the transcendent knowledge through which one's consciousness is absorbed in Lotus Feet of Krishna is the actual or real Vidya which cuts the nuts of Avidya. Krishna's holy name is the life of that wife, Vidya, who fixes the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. So Vidya is transcendental knowledge, is wife of Krishna. Vidya Vadu Jivanam. <laughs> Again, why, why Vadu is used? It's his wife, transcendental knowledge. Bhaktisan Saraswati Thakur calls Mundaka Upanishad, and he explains, two types of knowledge, material and transcendental. Vidya and Avidya. Chanting of Lord Krishna's holy name is indirectly the fountainhead of all material knowledge. Chanting holy name is fountainhead indirectly of all material knowledge also. Because material knowledge is perverted reflection of spiritual knowledge. Everything comes from Krishna. The language comes from the original syllabus. Every syllable, a, a, i, i, u, u, e, e, o, i, a, angha, everything is Every letter refers to one of the Vishnu's forms, Vishnu's names. Language is meant to glorify Vishnu. The concept of communication is meant to describe Vishnu. Everything is meant to achieve moksha, to get shelter of lotus feet of the Lord. But it is primarily life and soul of transcendental supramundane knowledge. Krishna's name is primarily the life and soul of the transcendental supramundane. Supramundane means above mundane, spiritual. Chanting induces the jiva to break the shackle of false ego and false prestige, a product of material knowledge, and elevates him to understand his eternal relationship with Supreme Lord Krishna. The ultimate focus of real transcendental knowledge, therefore, is chanting Krishna's holy name. Yeah? The ultimate focus. So transcendental knowledge, the knowledge which describes Krishna's name, the knowledge which describes Krishna bhakti, devotional service, this knowledge actually overpowers avidya, frees us from material, material uh, concept. All right. Mm, so there is, I heard today there's a marriage party, correct? Hmm? 
Kalyana, Kalyana. All right. So what do we do? Nine o'clock. When did we start? We have Ananda Bodhivadam Pratipadam, Purnamrita Swadhanam, and we have Sarvatma Snapanam, Param Vijayate Sikrishan. Three, three more explanations we have. You want to continue tomorrow? After happy marriage? Or shall we do one more now? Ten minutes? Huh? Ten more minutes. Thank you very much. Okay. Ananda Bodhivadanam Pratipadam Purnamrita Swadhanam. Ananda, bliss, Ambudi, the ocean, Vardhanam, increasing, Pratipadam, at every step, Purna Amrita, of the full nectar, Aswadhanam, giving a taste. Prabhupada explained, spiritual happiness is Ananda Buddhi Vardhanam, or the ocean of happiness which increases. The material ocean is stagnant, but the spiritual ocean is dynamic, ever increasing. Okay, Prabhupada explains in many ways, very interesting. In material world, we are simply chewing the truth, chewing it away, picking it up, and then chew it again. What a statement. <laughs> and it's true. No? Just somebody gets drunk and say, I'll never drink again. I did that. And I spoke in this, and I beat my wife, and I passed water in my pants. I never do anything. I embarrass myself. No? And after one month again, clock, clock, clock. You know? So is it, is it, what is it? Chewing it, chewing it. Picking it up again, I went to divorce, my heart is broken, my wife left me, she took all the property, she took all the money, I'll never get married again. And in six months, what is it? Where is my wife, new wife, second wife? So it's again and again we are doing, again and again, again, correct? What a, you look at the Prabhupada's statements. Spiritual variety is not like this. Spiritual variety is Ananda Bodhivardhanam, constantly increasing. It is even greater than the ocean, because the ocean does not increase. The shores of the ocean are set. They have certain limits. However, the ocean of bliss is constantly increasing. The more we enter into spiritual bliss, the more we become joyful. The young people in the Hare Krishna movement chant Hare Krishna Mahar Mantra all the time. If this mantra were material, how long would they chant it? It is not possible to chant material name for very long, because the chanting would become hankered and very tiresome. No one would be satisfied simply by chanting Hare Krishna, unless Hare Krishna itself were spiritual. We may chant, Mr. John, Mr. John, Mr. John, but after an hour, we'll be fed up. However, the more we become spiritually advanced, the more bliss we'll derive from chanting Hare Krishna. Is it true? True. We can experience Ananda perfectly in association of Krishna. We can associate with Krishna as a servant, friend, father, mother, conjugal lover, there are five basic rasas, Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya. So now this is, this is the thing. Prabhupada just give you one sentence here. Bhakti Nantaku gives like this purpose about these rasas now. <laughs> so he goes, that what, what is Ananda Bodhivardhanam? Once you have your spiritual form, then you have your spiritual senses, then you are in association with Krishna. It's seeing Krishna, smelling Krishna, touching Krishna, serving Krishna, sharing ladus with Krishna, playing it. It is so much overwhelming ecstasy. That material world is, what is the memory of Jiva who comes to spiritual world about material world? Some nightmare, some bad dream, I don't want to think about it. It's just like that. That is experience left in mind. Some nightmare I have, some bad dream. Nobody was, oh, it's better spiritual, better material. No comparison like that. Okay. Okay, there was one more information for forgot to give. Vidya for previous Vidya Vadu Jivanam, that also in the explanations of Divya Saraswati, Lord Nasingadev's wife, uh, who gives transcendent knowledge, who initiated Brahma. No, the hey, the woman was the first guru <laughs> <laughs> to Brahma, but who initiated her? Krishna, the male. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes Vidya Vadu Jivanam, Vidya Vadu, Vidya, the personification, transcendental knowledge, Divya Saraswati, so refers to her also in some commentaries. All right, so here we are discussing the Anandam Bhutivardhanam. Prabhupada explains like this uh, By chanting Hare Krishna, our pleasure potency increases more and more. One who has realized Krishna is always living in Vrindavan, Vaikuntha. 
All the devotee may, may seem to be living in some place far from Vrindavan. He is always living in Vrindavan because he knows that Krishna is present everywhere, even within the atom. The Supreme Lord is bigger than the biggest and the smaller than the smallest. Once we are fully realized and established in Krishna consciousness, we never lose sight of Krishna. And our bliss is always increasing. This is the true yoga system, Bhakti Yoga, as expounded by Lord Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita. So, this is, uh, they ask Prabhupada, are you missing Vrindavan? And Prabhupada said, I always in Vrindavan. And that was in some apartment in USA <laughs> discussion. No? And not only that, but he turns all place into Vaikuntha. When you come in presence of pure devotee, everything changes, consciousness changes, everybody is influenced, everybody is completely turned into the spiritual, spiritual uh, un works under spiritual potency at once. So here, Prabhupada explains this, that, that um, pure devotee never loses sight of Krishna. There was a simple incident, very interesting also, that uh, Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Thakur was invited for, some, for darshan. He came for darshan of the deities in the temple, and there was little distance to the deities, quite some distance, and he didn't have his glasses. So one of the disciples said, Maharaj, would you like to come a little closer so you can see Krishna? And he said, do you think by material vision I can see Krishna? He is the seer. So I came here, when he sees me and he desires to reveal himself, he will reveal himself, no glasses will help. <laughs> he didn't say no glasses, I say no glasses will help, but you understand the complete different vision, he's very confident. We came for Darshan to be seen by Krishna. He is the Drishta. He is the, he is the seer. And we are to be seen. We are his servants. And when he wants to reveal himself, he will reveal himself. No glasses needed at that time. No? So a complete different consciousness. No? So this is, this is amazing. All right. So here Bhakti Thakur explains, Ananda Bodhivadana. The gross and subtle material bodies of Jiva being completely destroyed, the infinitesimal soul regains his original pristine purity. Okay, so again, mukti, moksha, moksha, liberation, spiritual form revealed. Although the jiva is anu, or minutely small, his spiritual happiness is not minute. To remove this misapprehension, Lord Chaitanya adds, ananda bodhivardhanam, every ever-increasing ocean of bliss. In other words, the holy name of Lord endlessly expands the spiritual bliss inherent to the soul by leaps and bounds. So the point is that, that because Anu Atma, you say, oh, we'll have less, less, smaller degree. We have small quantities, Krishna has big quantity. We have small, same quality of Krishna, but small. Actually, we say quality is equal, quantity is equal. Maybe quality is not equal. Qualities, even qualities you can compare to Krishna's qualities. But you may say, in one way, it's equal. All right. So he thus becomes eternally fixed in one spiritual mellows, namely Dasya, Sakya, Vatsala, or Madhurya. Establishing his eternal spiritual mellow, he begins to relish limitless nectar at every stage of his transcendent relationship and exchanges of extraordinary loving emotions with the Supreme Lord. <laughs> Remember what Prabhupada said, our hearts are meant for Krishna's pastimes. And this is what Bhakti Thakur said. Extraordinary loving emotions with Supreme Lord. Now, sometimes you in family, we, how much children give us pleasure, or wife speaking sweetly like a cuckoo gives a pleasure, or you know, they, we have some friendship, we feel so much pleasure. Can you imagine become friend of Krishna? What a friend is that? No? Can you imagine become lover of Krishna, become mother of Krishna? These are Amazing feelings, this is an intensity. And when you feel good that your friend likes you, no, you feel good to be liked. How much Krishna can like who is unlimited? No? This is amazing if you think about it. We are thinking theoretically, of course, of course, don't be so. <clears throat> the Supreme Lord, Krishna is exchanging beauty, his divine qualities. In enhancing beauty, Krishna is enhancing beauty. His divine qualities, his sublime pastimes are ever aesthetic and eternal. Krishna is now a Yohanam. Every day he is completely new. 
It's not that, oh, I already saw him, I already saw him. No, when we go to around the temple, you know, sometimes people come to temple and come out, they don't even look at the shikar or something, you know, because every day they are coming, no? But when people come first time, oh, 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 what is it? You know, shocked completely, no? But for us it's common. But it doesn't happen with Krishna. We go to see Krishna every day, every day. Oh, how beautiful it is. Newly, now I own him. Completely, freshly, he impresses you like first time you are seeing him. Completely new way attracts you. And same Krishna, same form, same everything, but everything is different. New experience, now I own him. Ever fresh, never boring, never, never satiated with, never enough. In a bride, with the divine prem, the pure jiva continuously drinks that sweet nectar, but still the Lord's captivating beauty remains ever fresh and ambrosial, relishing endlessly unique and novel ways. So this is again, Bhakti Nantaka just points out. And uh, he quotes, in Bhajana Rahasya, he quotes a few shlokas. Now this is from Gajendra, uh, Gajendra Moksha prayers. Ekantino yasya kashchanartam Ekantino. Okay? Um, okay, let me read translation. Unalloyed devotees who have fully surrendered to the Lord, this is Ekanta, seek no benediction other than to serve Him, constantly singing the glories of His most wonderful personality and activities, they merge into an ocean of transcendental bliss. So here, Ananda Buddhivadanam is explained, singing about the Lord, singing His name, singing His qualities, singing His pastimes. So what is the Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur explains a little bit the shloka that ekantino, ekantina, those who do not take shelter of any demigods, those who do not take shelter of the jnana or karma, fruitive activities or speculative knowledge, ekanta, those who are one-pointedly focused on the lotus feet of Krishna, these are the pure devotees. And that you will find throughout the Bhagavatam, this ekanta bhakti. Tavai kanta bhaktashu, aham tvam hare pada eka etma mula, da sanata subhavira smibuya. Everywhere you find this in Kunti's prayers, in Bhishma's prayers, in Ritrasura's prayers, in Shiva's prayers, Gajendra's prayers. Everybody speaks ekanta bhakti. The one pointed uh, focus devotion to Krishna, to nobody else. So here, uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, Why do these unalloyed devotees seek no other benediction? because they are completely fulfilled by the great treasure of surrender itself. In order to show how the joy of surrender is greater than any other, Gajendra goes on to describe their activities. They are singing, they are chanting, they are dancing, they are glorifying the Lord. No? So this is what Vishnu Chakra Thakur explained, the joy of surrender. No? What is, what is a, uh, what we, yesterday we were talking about one young men coming to temple, doing some service, they're going home, then coming, doing service, then again going home, then going for material job, then coming back, want to serve, then he serves for one month, then he goes back home, then gets a job, then gets fried with a job, then comes back. They already 20 times he did like that, correct? So one devotee was a little enthusiastic preaching. Uh, almost I told his name. Uh, Prabhuji, you have to surrender. And they surrender word. <clears throat> he made a face. <clears throat> Surrender is bitter for the conditioned soul. But look at this. Fulfilled by the great treasure of surrender itself. Once you surrender, it's bliss. You are free from worry. Krishna will take care. You are free from worries. I have nothing to manage. I have to manage. My mother is sick. I have to manage money. I, my boss is cheating me. I have no uh, degree. I can't get a job. And then I want to serve, but I have to take care of family. But uh, So many things in the head. Just surrender. And when he heard surrender, he made face like, And left. Anyway, he'll come back. Maya plays cricket. Bang! This is what Prabhupada says. If you don't learn by intelligence, we got by the beating. Maya will bang. Maya is a cricket bat. This is a very appropriate example for India. <laughs> <laughs> So like that. So he explains this, that there's so much pleasure in surrender. It's not suffering. It's not suffering. That you're losing your individuality. You're losing your freedom. How can this person whom you call your guru tell you to bow down? <laughs> but guru, why guru bow down, you know? Why? It's, it's good for you. It's not good. What guru gets benefit? You're bowing down. So what? What, how, what benefit he gets? You are getting purified. 
<laughs> that's a guru. No? Once we were in some village in, um, what is it called, Baleshwar in Orissa. And uh, we went doing kirtan through the village and all the villagers come and everybody is touching Guru Maharaj's feet. You know, everybody. Man, woman, young, old, everybody wants to touch feet. A mess, you know. Now that you can do kirtan and we, can, we cannot do kirtan. Everybody is singing. So you singing, but we can't walk through the street. It's so much. So we are protectors of the Maharaj. Maharaj, super intelligent servants. We start pushing people, little, not super politely, you know. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. And Maharaj is holding some agarbati. Somebody gave full bundle of agarbati to Maharaj. Bring, Big, you know, the 50 agarbatis, like they smoke. We are going hard enough, Maharaj is carrying his agarbatis, somebody give it. <laughs> and Maharaj is holding agarbatis. Good for them. Not good for us, good for them. And just allow. And we are walking, walking, everybody touching, the, you know. So what's the point? What benefit he gets? Oh, oh some remote village in Orissa bow down to me. Yeah, so <laughs> not big deal. <laughs> but people get benefits. They're touching sannyasi's feet, they get them. See, that's the consciousness. No? Sarva dharma paritya jama me kam sharanam raja. Why is the ego? Ego step. Bow down to me. Good for you. I already delivered. I have nothing to gain. Atmaram. Good for us. Bowing down. Okay, good for me. Stop the. Stop the just one more shloka. Huh? Then Bhakti on Thakur quotes Padyavali and um, says like this May my respectful obeisance be given to the shoes of those wise devotees who have learned the technique of liberating the poor creatures who are caught in the stinking mud of the ocean of material existence. Look at this look. One simply hearing the two syllables of Krishna's name, these devotees are overcome with bliss and their bodily hair stands erect. So again, he's telling by chanting, you get this ananda bodhivadanam, transcendental bliss. And look how nice shloka is that. I offer pranam to shoes of devotees who are going and preaching around and delivering for the souls. And what are their symptoms? Just by hearing your holy name, their hair, pulakari nishitamva pukada, sada, all the time their, their, their uh, hair stands at the end and they experience these symptoms. And uh, here is how Bhakti Thakur concludes. He says, um, one who gives up everything to devote himself to kirtan alone becomes immersed in an ocean of ecstasy. This is Bhakti Thakur's conclusion. This is, this is understood by studying all the shloka. This is what I understood. <laughs> so this is good message for us. Bhakti Saraswati Thakur says, Ananda Murnivardana, he says, chanting the holy name expands the boundless ocean of transcendental bliss and enables one to fully relish the sweetest nectar at every moment. Only a vast expanse of water is called an ocean, nothing less. Therefore, unlimited bliss has been rightly compared to an ocean. Such transcendental experiences are these, uh, as these are eternal and unfettering by imperfection, nor does it lack fullness or consistency. So these are perfect purna feelings. These are completely, fully manifested feelings of the soul. Now we have feelings filtered through our mind, our filtered through intelligence, our feelings through the senses, our feelings completely mess up with our concoctions, contaminated consciousness. The pure feeling of the soul, how strong it is. No? Sometimes you are so much knocked out by feeling that you are dysfunctional. You know, somebody dies or something, even happiness. Sometimes people puzzle. People come for initiation and the Prabhupada asks, what are the four regulated principles? <laughs> Paralyzed completely, you know, overwhelmed by the emotions. No? No? One devotee said in memories, he came there and, and he sat in front of Prabhupada and uh, Prabhupada was holding Japamala, so he extended left hand. So Prabhupada pulled back Japamala. He didn't know why. He didn't know left hand, right hand. No, Western, he didn't know. So he took, you're not going to initiate me. I'm so bad, I'm so sinful. Prabhupada is rejecting me. Then again Prabhupada is showing Mala. Again he went with left hand. Again, oh, second time, I'm finished. I'm finished. Mind goes crazy, so emotional, you know. Then Prabhupada turned to servant. Tell him, 
So then Sarah said, right hand, right, okay, right hand. Then he put right hand, and Prabhupada has to ask four regulator principles, you know, and this devotee is praying, Prabhupada, already embarrassment, already mess, I had, I'll collapse, don't ask me, please don't ask me, don't ask me for four regulator principles. And Prabhupada, looking, looking, all right, your name. He didn't ask him for principles. <laughs> Then the devotee say, Prabhupada, now after 30 years later, on your Vyasa Puja, I promise, Prabhupada, I'll follow for regular to I have to give commitment. <laughs> 30 years later, in front of Prabhupada, Murti committed. Because I know it. your commitment is, you are committed to deliver me. My commitment, is, my commitment is to follow you. So after so many years. But just see this emotion, how strong it is. They were all practicing for regular prayers, for regular, follow regular And then you come in front of Prabhupada, Completely paralyzed, left hand, right hand. You had experience for your own diction, no? That some everything becomes a little different, you know, a kind of mind is not really present and intelligence is a little clouded. Okay? So can you imagine pure feeling? This is also feeling coming from that importance of diction. But can you imagine seeing Krishna? Can you imagine dealing with pure devotees or anything like that? No? So they are not lacking any fullness or consistency. These are eternal, ever-increasing feelings. This is the spiritual world. Even spiritual nature and objects take on a tenderness and cooling sheen in touch with the chanting of Krishna's holy name. Everything, even seeing Vrindavan, seeing Yamuna, touching anything then, Kalpavrikshas, dealing with devotees, everything is a spiritually completely giving transcendental bliss. In the mundane realm, the body and mind, and above them the soul, not only become purified by Krishna's name, but gradually, inevitably, in blame by its cooling tenderness. And while we are in the material world, if we change Krishna's name, this, even, even in this realm, we are in, in, bound, in blame. We are, we are protected by the holy name and its cooling rays. That, that also suits us in the material world, that we will feel relief, you know. Okay, Sarvatna Snapanam tomorrow. Thank you very much for coming and hearing. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.